Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this Back to Basics video, we're going to take a look at the Mesh Deform modifier. This modifier acts like the Lattice modifier, except it gives you an extra layer of control. Let's get into it. Here we're starting with a standard Suzanne model, with a subdivision surface modifier applied to it. We'll go ahead and add a Mesh Deform modifier to it. Like I said, Mesh Deform works much the same way as a Lattice modifier. Except, instead of using a three-dimensional rectangle as our deform cage, we can use an arbitrary mesh as our cage. So in this case, let's build a mesh that's a little more the shape of Suzanne. There, that's good for now. Going back to our Suzanne model, we'll choose this mesh as our object. Now the first thing you might be inclined to do in this situation is to start deforming your cage mesh. Let's try that and see what happens. Absolutely nothing. Before we can continue, we need to bind the mesh to the deform cage. And to do that, we simply click the bind button. When the bind button says unbind, that means our mesh has been bound to our cage. Now when we deform our cage, it will deform the underlying object. I'm going to change the display type of our cage under the Object Properties tab under Viewport Display and change its display as to Wire. Now I can put this in solid mode and still see my underlying object. Once you've started tweaking your object, you may find you need more control. If you go into your cage object and change the vertex count, you'll notice that it no longer controls your object. Going back to our object, we see that the Mesh Deform modifier now has a warning that the cage vertices changed from 78 to 88. That means that the cage binding is no longer accurate. To remedy this, we simply need to unbind the cage and then bind it again. You'll find when you do this, the new cage becomes the basis of the model and so the model starts the way it was at the beginning, not the way it was when it became unbound. To get back there, we would need to unbind the cage, change the cage back to the way it was, and then rebind. If you'd only like the Mesh Deform modifier to affect part of the mesh, go ahead and create a vertex group. In this case, I don't want the Mesh Deform modifier to affect the eyeballs, so I'll select everything but the eyeballs, add a vertex group, and assign the weight. Now in my modifier, I'll select that vertex group. If I move all of the vertices of the cage, you'll see that it now affects the entire mesh, except for the eyes. If we wanted to invert this behavior, we would simply click the double arrow button. If you're finding that the cage control is not precise enough, you can increase the precision. Your cage has to be unbound in order to change this setting. But be careful, if you set this too high, you can cause your machine to freeze up. Generally speaking, the precision of 5 is good enough. If you're using the Mesh Deform modifier on top of other types of deform modifiers, you may need to use the dynamic setting in order for it to compute using those settings as well. Do keep in mind that your cage mesh can use shape keys. For instance, if I go ahead and add a basis shape key for this mesh, and then add a second one, and then make some adjustments. If I bind this object, and then utilize these shape keys, they will affect the mesh. And of course, you can blend these together. One more thing you can do is create stacked cages with one mesh. So in this case, if I wanted to create some smaller controls around the eyes, all I would need to do is unbind my mesh, edit my cage mesh, and I'm going to add a cube in edit mode. I'll place it around this eye, select it, duplicate it, and put the duplicate around the other eye. As you can see, these two meshes are not connected to our outer cage mesh and are just floating inside of it. Once we have them lined up the way we want them, 
we'll go ahead and rebind our object. Now when we move our mesh, we see that the parts within the inner cubes are not moved with the outer part, and we can move those completely separately. This combined with shape keys can give you a lot of control. I hope this rundown of the mesh deform modifier has been helpful. I hope it gives you some ideas and inspires you to make something awesome. If you've been enjoying the channel, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to watch this video, and I'll catch you next time.